In this video of Automation Unleashed, I'm gonna teach you how you can take forms in high level, like this one right here, and automate them within workflows in Go High Level. So check this out. More specifically, the form that we'll be looking at is a status or a meeting update form for sales or initial consultation meetings. And it's been embedded on a funnel so that you can just pr pretty much personalize the domain. And once we open up this form, you can see that it's a relatively basic form at the top with first name, last name, phone, and email. But then once we go further down, we've added custom fields uh, to the form to personalize the form and its data for our use case. And again, the use case of this one is like an initial consultation, initial sales meeting, where this is an internal form that your sales representative, your, you yourself are filling in this form during the meeting with your lead, your contact, your client, and you're basically telling, hey, the form, was what was the status of this meeting? Did the contact show? Were we unable to contact them? Did they no show? Did they did we sell them? Were they unqualified? What was the lead of this? The value of this lead? My value is high. I think this is a million dollars. You guys can count. And then we'll add some internal notes that are not sent to the client. We can add some conversation recap notes that could be sent to the client if we want to. And this is pretty much where we check and we say, yes, we do want to send these notes, yes or no. And then we're also going to choose a follow-up date where if we need to follow up with this lead, we need to do something uh, and like uh, initiate some sort of process or action with this lead, we could choose a date right here and then basically hit submit this form. And again, this is an internal form, but this could also be an exter external form. If you wanna personalize this and make this an external form and embed it on a funnel and have your clients or leads fill in this form, that's very much possible. And what I mainly wanna focus on during this video is teaching you guys how to automate these forms with automations. So we'll jump into this workflow right here specifically, and we'll check out how I've automated that form. So the trigger at the top is once this form is submitted, we would want to trigger actions. So the first action is just a 30 second wait step. Then we'll add a system note saying that, hey, this status update form was submitted with the current appointment status, which is showed, sold, all that good stuff. And uh, pretty much that if you wanted to update that lead status, you could use this trigger link right here and the internal notes that we took for ourselves are noted in this note as well. We've got the name, the email, the phone number. And again, once you're in the CRM under contacts and you open up a specific contact like myself right here, you can see which pages this contact has visited and the forms that they've submitted. And then up here under notes, you would see these notes like this one right here for the status update and any other notes that these automations would have created. The next action step after that is this if else condition right here. And we're triggering this if else condition based on a custom field. The name of this custom field is appointment status. And we can see once the appointment status is unable to contact, let's trigger certain actions. Once the appointment status is contacted, no show showed, that's pretty much uh, where we want to differentiate and create separate trees, separate paths, and take separate actions um, for that specific lead. So if they're sold, we want to send them a welcome email, that kind of stuff. If they no showed, we want to nurture them and remind them to show and rebook that call. And we'll add the tag no show, move them to a certain pipeline stage. So we'll have a look at this just to clarify. This again is a custom field. This custom field data is pretty much here on the contact. So on the contact, you have all these different custom fields. The, all the custom fields for this form right here are actually stored under the contact under this folder status update information. And so you can see I already filled in the form. I already have some data in these custom fields. And to get to these custom fields, create them, organize them into folders like this right here, you would pretty much go into settings and then scroll down to custom fields. And hopefully you're or as organized as I am and you create folders for your custom fields. And you can see this order that we have right here was pretty much the order that we had on the contact level. So if you wanted to change this, you could just reorganize and drag and drop it down or up and it would reorganize the folders over there. But pretty much all these status update information fields, I think it's a total of six right here, are the six additional special fields that we have right here. So again, keep your high level account as organized as possible because if you have an all-in-one business system, it's easy to get it messy. You know, you've got the calendar stuff, you've got the custom fields, you've got the automations. So the more you can use a unique naming convention 
and organize your data, the happier you will be in your long run. Believe me, when I started using high level, I just had a big mess and I still have a big mess. <laughs> so definitely start organized and train yourself to be organized. And again, this main condition right here is triggered based on that custom field. Let me just show it on the form well, one last time. This appointment status right here, which is no show, showed, sold, all that good stuff. And to trigger automations like this, you do not have to submit this form. You can also trigger based on that custom field being changed. The trigger would be contact changed. We would add the custom field right here and say, hey, this is the appointment status and the appointment status has changed in general or has changed specifically to no show. And we would have that trigger up there. And then we could duplicate that for all the different stages and we could create this if else tree. So you don't have to submit the form, but uh, it can be done either just by changing the field just right here like this manually with what I just showed you guys, or it can be submitted in a form and in a nicer format with multiple information, a lot of different information, like the internal notes, conversation, recap notes. But with that being said, let's go to this automation and let's check out the left side over here. So if we were unable to contact, we'll add the system note that we were unable to contact. We'll add the name, the email, and uh, we'll, we'll just have that nice and handy here in the CRM under the notes. Then the next step is we'll go ahead and add the tag unable to contact to keep the, that data, that information in the tag as well. And it's up to you guys. Some people like to store certain information in tags. I think this is a very fair tag to use, but some people like to store their information in the notes. So depending on where it's easiest for you to find that data, and obviously notes are a lot more data where you can add a lot more little texts and, and information than a little tag. So there's different, I see a lot of people just overuse tags. And if you wanna store certain data in, in notes, in the opportunities, in different sections within high level, I think that would be better sometimes. And then we'll go ahead and update the opportunity and move them to unable to contact. And what you'll see here is that these next stages are very similar. So if we contacted them, we move them to the contacted pipeline stage and add that tag. And, and those notes, if they no showed, we do the same for no show and we update the appointment status to no show because those won't update automatically in the CRM. So if you go to calendars and appointments, you will see that you have to always uh, add that little automation right there to update the appointment status. I don't know if I have any appointments actually in this dummy account. Um, so let's see. But yeah, so there's no appointments in here. This status right here, this needs to be updated with an automation like this one right here. Update appointment status to no show, confirmed, canceled, all that good stuff. And we need to do that for each stage. So if they showed, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. We add the note, we update the opportunity, and then we have uh, the conversation recap notes. So on this form, you have the internal notes that are never sent, but you have these external conversation recap notes that can be sent to the client based on if you check the box and if you want to do that. And if we go back to the automation or the workflow, you can see this is what that if else condition looks like. If, if it's yes, then yes, send them. And then the none branch is just everything that's not a yes, the exact opposite pretty much. And so depending on that, we'll send an email with, uh, this was, I guess the yes branch, this is the none branch was saying like, hey, here are the conversation recap notes. So this little custom field right here in this email is um, pretty much these conversation recap notes right here. And it'll populate very nicely in that email or not very nicely, but that text will populate depending on how you input it in like little bullet points and stuff like that in this uh, field right here. And then you can also send a similar SMS, obviously a lot shorter, but if you wanna change anything here, you're more than welcome to personalize all of this to yourself and delete any action steps, obviously. And if we don't send the conversation recap notes, you can see that custom field is missing. Here it is, here it isn't. So it's as simple as that, creating if else conditions, creating these different scenarios, because this is one big branch up here, and then we're branching out that branch again. And obviously it does take some time to create automations like this, but once you have this set up for your business, how amazing is it gonna be to be able to relax and send the conversation recaps notes automatically or not. So I think those little percentages of changes in your business, they do add up. And that's where you go from a hustling business where you're spending a lot of time to a thriving automated business 
where you're constantly optimizing your system. You and your employees know how to use the system. So that's, I think, a big leverage. Once you're in business for one, two, three years, it's about those little compounding changes that you make week after week, month after month that do add up over the full year and that change your business. So as menial as these little changes here seem, they compound and stick to it. Don't give up. Keep going and make that little progress. Make, check those little task box every every day. If you can check more tasks and get more things done, that's amazing. So let's keep moving forward. And we can see that we are basically, depending on if they showed up, if they were sold or if they were not interested or if they were unqualified, we've got these go-to action steps where once we're done with one of those branches, we pretty much just go over here so that we can send these conversation recap notes or not. So that's an interesting add-on to this workflow right here and definitely worth checking out these go-to actions and the if-else actions because they can be, again, very powerful and help you optimize your business. But other than that, again, we're just updating the opportunities. We're adding system notes. We're adding the appropriate tags. Let's see what's going on over here on the right. So if they were spam for whatever reason and whatever you call spam, then you can automate that within here as well. Add the tags junk update the contact fields, and uh, yeah, just make sure that again, you keep all your data in high level clean. It's not just about keeping the automations, the workflows, the custom fields organized and folders and all that good stuff, but it's also about keeping your own data clean, having, um, yeah, spam, unsubscribe, all of that nice and categorized so that you don't spam anybody who doesn't wanna be, you know, who's opted out, but then also who you've opted out, who you think is not a great fit. In addition to that, we'll go into settings and we'll have allow re-entry on so that people can enter this, this workflow multiple times uh, because if you have it off, they can only go in once and once they've been in once, they won't be allowed in again. So I think that's a smart setting to have on and we would wanna have stop on response off. If you did want to only uh, send these automations, the emails in a specific time, you would have this specific time window toggled on right here. But other than that, that's pretty much this form and these automations. If we go back to this folder, we won't save any changes right here right now. And if we go back into this general folder, you see that we have that status update workflow that we just looked at and these follow-up reminders. Because on this forum right here, you do have this button or this custom field down here, say follow-up in and then a specific date or time. And we need to create a workflow for that as well. So we would pretty much just use this trigger here up here at the top to basically set a custom date reminder and we'd say in which field that data is stored. And then we'd wait 30 seconds, we'd add a system note saying that this has happened and we'd add a task if you wanted to. So pretty much once that date happens, it'll create this task right here, it'll trigger, it'll say, hey, this is due in this time and that you wanted to follow up with this contact name, email, phone number, and it actually also adds the conversation recap notes. So I think this is a very powerful little workflow that a lot of businesses can benefit from where once you, again, fill in this form, you just set the date and then you're automatically reminded by the system, hey, you wanted to follow up. These were the conversation recap notes. This is what you need to do. So definitely check out this automation and workflow as well. And then we'll send an email and SMS uh, as well saying that to the assigned user. So this is an internal notification saying that, hey, you wanted to do this. So we're not only gonna create a task, but we're also gonna land in the inbox and on the mobile phone saying that you wanted to do some work, buddy. And if we look at the settings here, allow re-entry on, stop on response off. But that's pretty much it. So this was the folder Z06 new lead form automations where we have this amazing form workflow and then the follow-up reminders as well. Let me know if, cause that was a lot of information, a lot of like complicated looking workflows, but really once you start using those if else conditions, those go-to actions, it gets a lot easier within high level. And just that first try, that second try might feel a little bit overwhelming. So if you have any questions, comment them down below. I do have my daily group coaching calls where I'm always happy to help anybody. Uh, so check out the free resources down below as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Peace.